architecture and building arts are a fundamental part of humanity. I mean, we share this from, from culture to culture, coast to coast, north, south, east, west, we build. Human beings build. Bhutanese architecture is unique and is a, a central point of Bhutanese national pride. My name is Rob Schneider. I am the festival technical director. I was able to visit many, many sites. A site called Taksan, which I have some unbelievable photographs. This is a cliffside monastery, 2,000 feet vertical, like clinging to a rock wall. I think the base altitude was at about 14,000 feet. So seeing a vernacular structure in its original setting in Bhutan brought to me the, the sanctity of that tradition. When the workers arrived in the U.S. or in Washington on Sunday, um, they didn't have their tools with them because their tools are on the container ship in route, still in route from Bhutan. And so they arrived to work here starting Tuesday morning without their tools. So typical Bhutanese fashion, they made their tools. The structure that's being built here is a, a typical Bhutanese Buddhist lakang or temple. And it's, an, it's, it's not a reconstruction, it will be an authentic uh, lakang that's all handcrafted or has been handcrafted in Bhutan, or at least the, the architectural decorative elements. It will be the largest structure ever built in the 42 years of the festival. We had to come up with a design that was true to Bhutanese aesthetics, but that would satisfy the regulatory uh, requirements that we have for visitors, visitor safety here on the mall. It's the same principle as the boat. Every, everything is kept in, you know, like uh, tension. Yeah. And then later they're gonna mud plaster, mud plaster it. And we have seen, uh, we have seen walls where like maybe 200 years old, and when we're renovating, like the bamboo inside is still intact. Yeah, um, this is a, a ramming tool used to ram earth. And again, what the workers are doing here is building a traditional wall out of clay. Part of our architecture story will show demonstrations of ramming. Um, it will show carving. It will show um, cutting of the timbers. Um, the ramming is also um, part of their, uh, the musical tradition because it, there's work songs related to it. Very often the women do the ramming. Um, so as the walls go up, you know, the songs fill the hillside. Nine of them had never been outside the country before, which means they had never seen a landscape without mountains. And I mean really big mountains. It's really exciting for me to see uh, the temple starting. It started to feel like before it was just walls, and now that you have the parts that, that, that are similar, you have the, the temple parts that are made in Bhutan and shipped here. And so it's, it's really exciting, and it's, it's a little bit you know, emotional for me to see, see those things. Um, the, the key Bhutanese part were all handcrafted in Bhutan uh, starting in uh, about November of last year. A uh, team of, of very highly skilled Bhutanese uh, carpenters, painters, sculptors uh, worked on it in different parts of Bhutan, carved windows, or ornately carved doors, the, the altar area itself, the sculptures that are inside, and the very large floor-to-ceiling paintings that will uh, adorn the walls inside the temple. These guys are really good, master level, every single one of them. The tools they use are um, ancient, hand-forged chopping tools um, that produce such a clean cut that they look like they're machine cut. They're absolutely bang on accurate, and the carving, absolutely breathtaking. I feel privileged to uh, do what I get to do. For, for me, um, being, being a Buddhist and also having, you know, going to a temple as, as part of your culture and you do it as a, as a family and uh, as a community, 
building a, a temple here it would have a significant um, spiritual bearing. Because B Buddhism is a very big part of our, our culture, and it's, it's so embedded in the culture that if you take Buddhism out, like, our culture, like, where, what's Bhutan? Yeah. Yeah.